Welcome to the Red White News Show with Dean McMurray, the military media. Hey everybody, welcome back to another great episode of the Red, White, and You Show with yours truly, the military medium. Today, my guest, Brian Gibson, 26-year Army uh, combat medic, uh, veteran, retired, uh, is the founder and president of Project Die Hard. That's right, he's doing what he can with the others around him to curb the suicide pandemic, the 22 a day. Um, but he's here today to talk to us about Project Die Hard. Brian, welcome to the Red Right News Show, man. Well, thank you. Thank you, brother, for having me. Absolutely. So share with the listeners, uh, viewers, a little bit who Brian is and, you know, how did you get from, you know, uh, you know, from the military kind of to Project Die Hard? Well, uh, First, let me start. I come from seven generations of Navy, but I joined the Army, okay? So when people ask me, where am I from? That's a hard thing to answer because I was born into a Navy family. I joined the Army at 17 in Seattle, Washington and served my country. Uh, 91 Alpha Combat Medic and then Transformation, the 68 Whiskey. Uh, that was that. I mean, it was a good career. I've been around the world. I, I loved it. But I've also been to some of the worst places in the world there is. So my story, real simple, goes back to about nine years ago. I was still active duty and I was a functioning alcoholic, right? Uh, well, when my son came home from Iraq as a wounded warrior, you know, my whole world started co to collapse around me. And one night, I was drinking and it was, hey, why am I here? And clean my weapon, shine the bullet, put the 45 in my mouth, ready to become one of the 22. And then I got a phone call from another veteran buddy of mine. And for some unknown reason, I answered it. And he goes, what are you gonna, what are you doing tomorrow? I really had no plans. So he said, hey, you want to go down with me to this church downtown in the Rathlin Alpha Harley? And I want you to go with. I don't want to go there alone. It's going to be a big crowd. Okay. Now, this is where I know that God has a sense of humor. <laughs> because if you've ever been to Paducah, Kentucky, that's where we're at right now. Uh, the old Finkel building downtown back in the day used to be an old five and dime painted bright red, and, you know, the old five and dime. Well, he started a biker church. Now, my name is Paint Spaded over the years, right? So it's a pink building. <laughs> so he started a biker church in the pink building. And the pastor there, Dennis Lawrence, really great guy, right, saw that something was wrong with him. And Burbage says he took the time to talk, but no, he took the time to listen. He took the time to listen. And that saved my life. That's a big difference, isn't it? You know, the time, taking the time to, to listen versus taking the time to talk. You know, there's... As, a, as I give public speaking things, I, I warn people. When you ask a veteran, hey, how's your day going? You got to be prepared to sit there for two, three hours because you might be that voice. Yeah. You might be that person that, that veteran just goes. And then 
what's there, you know? Right. Well, coming back off that, I'm back with the Lord and I'm praying and I'm getting there, getting there. And it was just, You know, moving along, I had some buddies come over and we were working on some bikes. And one of my buddies goes, man, wouldn't it be great if your shop was bigger? Doesn't every guy think that? Yeah, you know. And my other buddy, he goes, oh, God, dude, you know, I could stay here for a month. And, you know, we could knock this out. I went, brother, you got to go talk to the wife on there because the last time we were together, there was bail money involved. <laughs> well, a few months after that, I got a phone call from the wife of a battle buddy, a mentor. A, if they made a modern GI Bill doll, he would be it. And she called me in a panic. Doc, 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 what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And I go, well, take a breath. I need to know what's wrong first. He's hanging in the garage. Mm. That is how Project I Heart got born because now something has to be done. So, Project Die Hard. <laughs> well, uh, as, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, there's a lot of information about us yeah. on the web, projectdiehard.org. To your listeners and to your viewers and your watchers, first, I want to say thank you for supporting this channel because without him, we couldn't get our message out and we couldn't grow. Right. Right. Because I will never spend millions of dollars on that campaign. That's right. One. right, right. Well, I think it's silly to be really honest. Uh, in this day age, there's no reason um, to do that. Um, there's enough podcast platforms going live, this, that, the other thing to um, share those messages out. And, and really, it's interesting, um, Brian, that, you know, you talk about the veteran network, you know, I don't know you, uh, never served with you. But the thing is, is, you know, on my social media channel, when I kind of asked, what do you guys need? What, you know, what's something you get? And you threw that out there. And I was like, holy crap. Like, I didn't know this, but, you know, I think we're friends on Facebook, right? But, yeah, we're, but, we're, yeah, yeah, we're in the same group. Yeah, but you know, it's... I didn't know that about you. And I was like, well, geez, I need to check this out. And Hey, we need to, we need to connect because you need to talk on my podcast about your organization. So other people learn about it. And, you know, that's what it's all about. People sharing other people's, not only stories, but creating a network, right? And that's more powerful than million dollar ad campaign anyways, in my opinion. Oh, well, yeah, we do on our Facebook page, we do a Friday at five. Right. Right. It's a mission update. And then I bring people on to that. It's not a, I won't say it's a podcast because I know it's just a mission yeah, update. Right, right? right. Yep. Yep. But I bring our sister charities on to talk sure. about their mission. I bring people on that will bring hope to yeah. our followers, you know, our right. veterans that are right. struggling. Because, yeah, it just, you know, and I've been talking for years, for three years since I started this, to all the veteran organizations out there. Right. If we work together, imagine what we could do. Right, right. Well, I think a lot, um, a lot more people are getting on that boat. They're starting to see um, the power in that, the power of network. Um, so in, in some areas quicker than others, but, um, I, I, I see a lot of veteran groups, I'll call them. So groups of whether it's entrepreneurs or nonprofit folks, but everybody's starting to 
that that group mentality and getting together and creating their own network uh, so they can essentially help more people, right? Get that message out there. And well, that's powerful. Well, that's the whole thing. It's, there's, there's a lot of things that my sister Jeremy's offer. Right. That by working together, it spreads the load. Yeah. Because that's something that now we at Project Guy Heart don't have to right. develop. And then, you know, and it, it's just that it saves, right. it saves other, it saves money all the way around the house and it right. spreads that load. Right. Because if you're already doing it, I don't want to replace you. <laughs> right. You know, right. I really well, don't. Well, like I said, I think it's kind of silly for, for people to, try to reinvent the wheel when it's already out there you know those platforms people people have different levels of followers but that one person that needs to hear it might be listening to this channel might be listening to your channel might be listening to one of your sister charities but that one individual or the handfuls or whatever but it starts with one right and then that's one it's it. the two and two and that's uh, how that's yeah. how it works yeah beautiful um, I understand, Brian, that you got uh, a cool PowerPoint here that uh, that you could share with us, and really, uh, it shares a lot of great details about um, Project Die Hard. Do you have that handy available? Uh, yes, I do. Let me hit this nice technology thing. Uh, boom! There we go. You can see it and I can see it. This is my standard PowerPoint now. Paid. Look, veterans, I got it. It's not death by PowerPoint. <laughs> There's not a lot here. You don't get, but this is the best way that I have found to get all this information out. And then at the end, questions can come. All right, this first deck is just me. You, my, you know my backstory. This is the, what we put out to everybody. I am married uh, to my wife, Celine. We 27 years now. Praise. Congratulations. We have two children, Stephen. He is a uh, U.S. Army retired, uh, IED in Iraq, TBI, and my daughter, Caitlin. I continue to serve my brothers and sisters by founding Project Die Hard to fight this war on veteran suicide. And it's a war. I don't care what anybody says. It's, this is a war. We win some, we lose some, but boom. And the whole thing is that. Uh, for those who really want to look at it, those are all my awards. Who cares? <laughs> you know? Oh, Got to hit on the right screen and boom. Our mission statement is to bring public awareness to veteran suicides and to assist veterans in coping with the stresses and difficulties in transitioning from active duty military to civilian life. We are a faith-based, scripture-oriented, 501c3 tax-exempt organization. Uh, that's the mission statement. The problem. Yep, this is a problem, is it not? Yeah, it is. It's a bit. It's it's a it's a difficult animal to nail down, for sure. Well, the first thing we got to do is we got to change everybody's lexicon on talking about suicide. Right. Because my daddy taught me if you don't talk about a problem, it doesn't go anywhere. Yep. It just sits there. So we got to get people used to talking about suicide. The solution, regardless if one of my brothers and sisters needs a place to talk, a bed for the night, a week, a month, up to a year, Project Die Hard is going to be there to help them. A veteran is more bound to talk, to chat with their kindred veterans, right? I got a question for you on this, Brian. I read this on your website, which I think is awesome. 
Um, but one of my questions for you is saying, well, that's great, Brian, if you're in Kentucky, but maybe they live in Illinois or North Dakota or California. Um, is this just for the Kentucky folks or, or is this oh, anywhere no. in the continental United States? Every mission has to start somewhere. Okay. Our goal is to put these facilities in every state. Nice. And that's not saying with our sister charities that, you know, I've gotten calls from veterans in California. Okay. In fact, when we get there, <laughs> wait till I tell you that one. But this is it. Uh, and we all got to start somewhere, right? <laughs> well, this is 20 acres and a 3,000 square foot building that was donated to our mission. Wow. It is named in honor of Sergeant Courtney Rush from the United States Air Force that on January 3rd, 2012, lost the fight to the demons and died by a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. I took a lot of flack on naming this property after a veteran that died by suicide, I did. Hmm. But no, when I say there's a war, there's still a war. And mm -hmm. we will honor our fallen just as we honor our brothers and sisters that fall in combat. Because this war is still here. The war still goes on when we come home. All right, here is the master plan for this 3,000 square foot building. Nice. Uh, as you can see, we already have our architects, our engineering firm, and our construction firm on board. Uh, we are partnered now with the Southern Illinois Community Foundation for grants that require their services. But, uh, let's see, Adam. These two rooms right here will house six veterans each. Okay. Nice. Okay. Th this is going to be a day room in a common area. Here is that phone call from California right here. This is what sets us a little bit different. We're going to take veterans with their families. Hmm because this is how it broke out. I got a phone call from a veteran out in California. Hey, are you guys real? Yeah, it's Fort Hope, and I'll get to that in a little bit. But is it real? I said, no, brother, not at this time. It's not, we're still trying to get it up off the ground. Long story short, I chased that rabbit down the hole. And now mind you, we, reached out and we got help for this veteran. But this 80% disabled veteran living in a minivan with his wife and three kids. Hmm. hmm. Yeah. It, Problem. Uh, yeah. And you know, the sad thing is with that, Brian, is um, that happens way more than uh, than we'd like to see, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But that's where I came back to my board and I went, uh, hey, ladies and gentlemen, guess what we're doing? And they went, what? We're going to house families too. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about families and insurance. Yeah, no, wait, we don't have enough time for that. <laughs> but I, we know we took on a big thing. And we know other organizations don't do this. And I understand why. It's a big expense. Sure. Right? We, are, we say up to a year. You cannot, in 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days, handle an issue. Yeah. It takes time. And if there's a single veteran, maybe we can help them, great. 
But if there's a venture with the family, we believe in helping the whole unit, the whole family. And uh, I've taken a lot of guff over it, but now it's got to be done because as far as I know, we're the only ones doing this. Right. I haven't seen anybody else taking families. Uh, laundry room, mechanical room. This is our dining facility. And right now there's nothing there, literally nothing. Right There's a bunch of leaves right there. <laughs> Here are individual counseling rooms. Uh, group counseling, conference room, and of course, the admin, the kitchen, all that. Now, mind you, this was 20 acres in a 3,000 square foot building. I wish I had a good picture of the overlay of the whole acreage because oh, we got big plans for this. Weekend cabins, getaways, the whole nine yard. Nice, nice. What we're going to offer... Emerald Therapy here, they're out of Western Kentucky, and they work with Western Kentucky, Southern Illinois. They're gonna provide our counseling services, free of charge, you know? Uh, I see, you gotta do what I do too. Yeah, yeah, I got some, got some readers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, veteran Resources, we're gonna offer job training, mm. whether it be with automobiles, motorcycles, electrical, plumbing, all that, because we're going to teach a veteran a trade. Uh, we just partnered last week. It's up on our website. There was a big thing on the TV with it, and we're proud to do it with Cassidy's Cause. This is equine therapy. For years, they've been trying to get a veterans program started. We want equine therapy on our facilities. Now, they're not a veterans organization, but they do, hey, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and you know, and that's actually growing in popularity and in, in, in showing uh, to... Uh to do great, great things. I know a lot of organizations, even in my state here, not only with veterans, but other folk, um, uh, equine uh, therapy has been proven, especially with, obviously with veterans, but with other folks. Oh yeah. To, uh, it's, to it, do tremendous things. Yeah. So that's awesome. Again, it's great therapy. Yeah. Now let's talk about therapy. Okay. Look, we are privately funded. Our patrons and our supporters have gotten us where we're at right now. We do not want to take any government money. Everybody goes, well, why not? Because if a veteran comes to me and says, hey, doc, I think uh, underwater basket weaving will help, sleep, help me sleep better at night. My job isn't to judge that. My job is, okay, how do we do it safely? Is it legal? Is it moral? And how do we do it safely? There's not one therapy set for anybody. Some works for some, some works for others. What sets us apart? We have complete transparency. Uh, contact us if you want our accountant's info. He has orders to release all of our financials to anybody who asks. That's just the way I, I think it should be. We offer long-term help, skill training, and families. None of us, none of the leadership takes a salary. I, I just can't, I can't justify it for me to get a paycheck from this organization. I can't. <laughs> I, I got a pension. I got 10 pounds of titanium holding my spine together. My bills are paid, but I can't mortgage my house anymore to keep this mission going. 
uh, our goal is to have 90% of every dollar go directly towards the mission. Uh, funding. Grants, our Club 22 events, donations, patrons. We formed in 2000, latter part of 2018, 2019. That's what we made, that's what we put out. 2020, again, um, we apply for grants all the way, but a grant is no guarantee. Uh, we lost a $500,000 grant because we don't have any paid employees. Hmm. Everybody said, well, you can take a salary, donate it back. No, no, that's not right. <laughs> That's just doing something to check a block. And I now, nah, if you're going to do something, you do it right. I'm sorry. Uh, events, all of our events for 2020. Well, you know what happened to all those, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Only by some private donations are we still here right now. Let me tell you how we got this property up in Illinois. We were almost ready to shut the doors. I reached out to a friend of mine, Pastor Greg Locke. I don't know if you heard of him or not, but he pastors this little church down in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. And I went down there just, just for prayer because when this man prays, it, you feel it. You know, God's got him on speakerphone. <laughs> and uh, this guy's great. But his church came, passed the hat, and came up with a small donation that kept us going. And that led to the Veterans of Foreign War still serving campaign to pick us up and spread our mission a little bit, which led to a local news station, WSIL Channel 3, to doing a, a story on us that led to the Haven of Love Christian Daycare Center calling us and saying, do you want to come and tell us about your mission? I'll go anywhere and talk about the mission. Get up there and take a tour of these 20 acres in a 3,000 square foot building. And Richard, their representative goes, brother, can you use this? And I went, of course we can use it. <laughs> but there's no way we can afford this brother he goes yeah but we're, we're donating it to you <laughs> okay it's like a what <laughs> that's what it was yeah that's what it was uh so now we got 20 acres a 3,000 square foot building so we have the land, we have the building, we have the plan. Uh, January 1st, we started a patron drive because our patrons I am grateful for. These are people that have stepped out of their way to do that reoccurring monthly thing. That's what we call our patrons. We ask for $22 a month in remembrance of the 22 a day. I have one veteran that gives us $10 a month and every month I want to give it back to him. But he goes, no, this is important. He goes, this is what we can afford. And I know that $10 could go a long way with him and his family. But he goes, this is what we can afford. So we started a patron drive on January 1st to get a hundred patrons giving $22 a month because that's going to cover the utilities and the insurance at Forward Operating Base Rush. Right. That's the first step. That's the first step. Because once we get that covered, then I can have all of our volunteers on the property and start working on the property to get that building back up to where it needs to be to take care of my brothers and sisters. So how can you help? Well, donate, of course. Uh, 
you can find our address on our website, projectdiehard.org, or on Facebook, Project Diehard 22, Instagram, Twitter, we're all over it. And as you follow those hashtag names, I don't know. <laughs> okay. There are so many, yeah. Uh... Yeah. Uh, your donation is our ammunition to fight the war on veteran suicide. Because every war needs ammunition, right? That's what somebody's donation is. Our patrons, our patrons, I am so grateful for. I am. I cannot thank them enough for what they do for us. Say, we ask for $22 a month in remembrance of the 22 day you lose. That breaks out to about 71 cents a day. I, I can't justify t-shirts and koozies and stuff. All I know is that another, another BSO that you see their commercials on TV spent $6 million on giving that stuff away. Mm. I just, I just can't see it. <laughs> everybody tells me, well, you have to. Why? Because everybody else does it. Well, just because everybody else does it does not mean that it's right. Right. And our volunteers, we got uh, electricians, carpenters, plumbers, all just waiting to get their hands on that building and get it up to snow. Uh, I'm going to roll back to patron for a second because this is something too that sets us apart. Whether you give $22 a month or $22,000 a month, every patron has the same right. You get to come to our facilities and see where your money's going. But I have to do a caveat on that, Dean. When you show up, bring muck boots and a pair of gloves because there's always going to be something to do. Yeah, absolutely. What? Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, come on. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're down here doing this. Come on and meet some of the people we're, we're doing. And right. hey, you can help out. As I said in the beginning, working together, we can do more. These are our sister charities. A soldier's heart, Jeremy Wallace and his gang, really good people. They take veterans hunting and fishing and all those little weekend excursions. Great. Love them for it. When we get a bunch of veterans at our facilities that want to go hunting and fishing and stuff, guess who I'm going to call? Hey, Jeremy. <laughs> Boom. Right. So I put it out there to every veterans organization that does that, reach out to us because we're going to put one of these in every state. And I want to work with all those. The Hugs Project of Western Kentucky. Uh, he is... Garen, he's a great guy. We, went, we attend church together and he started this. He, he sends care packages over to our deployed brothers and sisters that don't get mail. How great is that? That's awesome. Yeah. Operation Tank Pull Up, Eric Horner from Eric Horner Ministries. He goes around outside active duty military bases and gives them five gallons of gas for your charge. Fills up the gas tank for the day. Nice. Okay. Vets for Warriors. I know you heard of them. It's manned by veterans that have been there, done that. If you need to talk, you call them. That way there, we don't got to build a call center. Cassidy's cause we really talked about already. I'm really happy about right here. Vigilant Valkyries. I just met her a couple of weeks ago and I am so glad to have her part of the team. She does retreats for our sisters. 
just our sisters. The deal we have with them is as our facilities get up and running, they're going to have a place to do those retreats at. Nice. Okay. What, you know, hey, boom, here, here's our weekend cabins, the years for the weekend. Go and do. US Vet Connect, we just locked in there. As our residents go through their year and they learn that trade or they learn that skill, these folks are going to help write resumes and help them find jobs. Again, something we ain't got to do now because we have these guys. That's what they do. Okay. And then the People's Patriot Project, really good guys. They're up north in, I think, Michigan or Minnesota, somewhere up there. They invited me beginning of February to go ice fishing. I was like, no, thanks. <laughs> They're not going to get you out on the ice, Brian? What's up? No, I don't think so. Plus, my last duty station before I got sent down here south was Fort Drum, New York. Yep, yep. I don't know if you've been there. Yeah, I've been to Great Old Tenth Mountain. Yeah, I really don't need to go back. Okay. <laughs> you don't miss the snow. What's up? <laughs> oh no, 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 no. <laughs> when when my detailer called and said, Hey, you can go to North Dakota, Wisconsin, or Kentucky before she got Kentucky out of her mouth. It was Kentucky. <laughs> she goes, you don't even know where. I said, I don't care. <laughs> I said there is 12 feet of snow sitting outside my house right now. <laughs> yeah. But the we the people. Uh Mark and I are on the same thing. On our Friday at five, when we bring in other nonprofits and stuff, a lot of people call us crazy. You're cutting your own throat because they're gonna give money to that nonprofit, not yours. Oh good. Good. That means they can do more. But again, by working together, we can do more. Right. Somebody will have a heart for our mission, the housing side of it. Right. Some people will have the heart, you know, for that portion of their mission. But together we can do more. That's the big thing. And then we go into questions. So I can stop the share. I was going to say, right. Brian, are all those, the the network that you're building thus far, the your your uh, partners, if you will, are they on your website currently? Is that? Yes. A, okay, perfect. So if yes. somebody wants to check out more about Project Die Hard or your charity partners, they can do that through, mm -hmm. through the website. So perfect. Yeah, through our website. It's all under there under sister charities. Uh, to our veteran uh, business guys that got great too, right? Bless them. I'm glad that they're, they're successful. We also offer business patronage. Nice. Where their logo can go on our website too. Again, we just ask them to reach out to us and see if it's a fit. You know, that's that's it. But yeah, it's Perfect. working together. That's it. Yeah. I think that I think you summarized it really well, Brian, is is saying, you know, working together, just like, you know, just like in the military, regardless of branch, um, it really takes a team effort to get everything done. And uh, the, the same goes true here, right? It's, it's going to take a team effort to not only get this aspect done, but going forward too. I love the model of saying there's a lot of great organizations doing tremendous things. Why not all work together and you don't have to recreate that. So somebody's already providing, say, for example, equestrian um, counseling services why do you have to recreate that? Why not ask them to, to work together and, uh, you know, do that? 
Um, and, oh, yeah. and just like it's, everybody else, I just love that. So yeah, it, and it's just like our veteran Jeremy Walls and his gang that take them hunting right. and fishing. Yeah, they do the they do that around here. Right. Well, who does that in Texas? Because right. we're going to be putting one there. You know, right. again, we're going to be that one stable thing throughout the nation that hey here we found a veteran on a weekend retreat that needs you guys right again that's how we're going to reach more of our brothers and sisters that need the help it is because that's it we blanket the nation brian if there's somebody sitting in a different state right now saying oh my god I have, I have a land, I know about investors, I know, and they want, they want to like, you know, work with you to maybe kick up another fob or, or whatever, another facility for Project Die Hard. How do they do that? Contact at projectdiehard.org. That's the email. Send us an email, send us an introduction. We will talk to you. But I'm not going to lie. We're very particular on who we bring on to the team. Sure. Okay, we are. Just because there's so many out there that want to fly by night and, you know, just. No, I will tell anybody, if you ever get a phone call from somebody saying, hey, we're raising money for Project Iron, call them a liar, because I will never authorize that. That's not how we know. Okay. If you want our financials, contact us. I'll shoot your email to our accountant. He, he'll he dump all that stuff on you. And if you can read it, God bless you, because I can't. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But yeah, it's that. It's contact at projectdieherd.org. Perfect. And we'll be glad to talk with you. Brian, before we close out today, any last uh, parting words, anything else you want to share before we close? Well, you have a bunch of different followers than I do, and I know a lot of them are veterans. And I know some of them are going through some tough times. Have faith, brothers and sisters. Stay strong. We're working hard. Everybody out here is working as hard as we can for you. But you got to stay strong. You got to be here tomorrow for us to help. If you want to talk, Vets for Warriors, talk. If you contact us, I'll do, I'll do my best to help you. I will. I got a network and I will reach out to as many people as I need to to get you the help you need. But we're not up and functioning yet. Trust me, as soon as we are, I'll that the world will know as soon as we cut the ribbon. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Well said. My guest today, Brian Gibson, founder, president of Project Die Hard. Brian, thank you so much for being on the Red White News Show, man. It's uh, It's been an honor. It's a privilege to to have you on and, and learn about the organization and, uh, you know, to, to spread not only you guys' mission, but uh, kind of vision of going forward. Well, I thank you, Dean, for having us, and you know, I wish you the best of luck. Keep up the great work that you're doing, because the guys like you, little little organizations like us, get to get our message.